John, this is uh, week three of an eight-part Olympic weightlifting series. Uh, this week we're going to do push presses and jerks. For the push press, it is a strength building exercise, but it also works on timing the dip, which is really important, and it translates over to the jerk. So with the push press, you start off feet shoulder width apart, slightly pointed out, uh, and with your feet, okay, film my feet for a little bit. So you want to, you want your feet to be pointing either like five degrees, around 15 degrees out. The reason being in the dip, you want to keep your torso upright and you want to be able to dip down rather than forward. So if my feet were completely straight and parallel, there's no chance that if I can keep my torso upright but not go into my toes. But if I were slightly pointed out, now my knees can track my toes and when I dip, I can still keep an upright torso. Right? Alright, so from here, the push press, it's a clean grip and that's about a fist width away from your shoulders. Side to side, half rack position, elbows down. Use your lats to hold it in. And now feet slightly pointed out. You're gonna dip, and as you drive, use your legs to drive up, and then get under. Lock out your elbows one more time. So dip, drive, get under. Now with the, um, with the push press and also the jerk, we apply our three basic principles. And uh, I've been repeating that over and over again, but that's just keeping the bar straight using your legs and your back for the majority of the lifting. Uh, and then the last part is just being strong and loose at the same time. So, bar traveling straight. So, bar traveling straight from shoulders to overhead. You want to keep that as straight as possible. A straight line, head back, shoulders, dip, drive, as straight as possible. Now, using your major muscle groups, your legs and your back, but for this one, mostly just your legs your back is just holding your core tight. So legs, drive, that does most of the lifting uh, from here, shoulders to around eye level. And then after that, you press and lock out your elbows, okay? Try pressing straight up. And the last part is staying strong, but keeping loose at the same time. So not, not loose to a point where I'm you know, around my back, but just strong and not too tight where I'm hyperextending and arching my back. So a happy medium. So that's why we say strong back, and not a tight back. So dip strong, but not tight. I don't want to arch my back. Just strong, and then straight down, straight up. Okay? All right, so moving on to jerks. Uh, a lot of the push press, like the dip, the drive, translates very well over to the jerk. So with jerks, there's three types. You have your power, you have your uh, full, or a squat jerk, and you also have a split jerk. Okay? So put down low. Power here, dip, drive, pull, or sorry, squat jerk, squat jerk. and from here, the split jerk goes dip, drive. Okay, so today we're going to talk about split jerks just because um, it's the most effective way of jerking for most people, easier to learn. Alright, so split jerk. So first, uh, you have to figure out your rack position. So everyone's a little different. I said general guideline is a fist width apart, but you can just use your own judgment depending on your limb lengths of how far your hands want to be. But the important part is that you use your lats and actually pull those elbows in tight. Uh, so down and out, elbows. And when you dip, you're gonna push your knees out, drive with your legs, and then when you land in position. You want to make sure that the front foot is splitting and you're slapping the ground with your heels, not your toes. Because if I'm going into my toes, I'm going to fall forward and my knee's going to track and keep going. Or rather, if I use my heel, oh, sorry, I'm going to stop right there. Chin is almost vertical, back knee is soft, and then I absorb the impact. So from here, just drive. Right? And the other thing is you don't want to tightrope. You don't want to be in a straight line like it's tightroping. So this will lose my balance, whereas when I split, I want to be so slightly wider. And then when you step in, it's front leg first, and then back leg follows. All right. Okay, so for movement practice, uh, before I eat, even hopping on the bar, you can just do body weight, and all you got to do is sit down, drive up, down, drive up, that's the first part. Now from here, after the drive up, your legs are going to split. So for, if you don't know uh, which foot is going to go forward, 
just go on your toes, lean forward. Whichever foot steps forward is usually the leg that splits forward. Okay, so from here. Up. Hold it. Step together. And you're looking for a vertical shin at the front and at the back. Soft knees and both feet are turned slightly in. Pigeon toe. Right? That gives you a little more stability side to side. Alright, so one more time from here. Dip, drive, split. Now you're looking for that vertical shin and upright torso. And the weight is distributed 50 50. So 50 on the front leg, 50 on the back leg. Common mistake is that too much weight is shifted forward and it goes down. And I'm falling forward. If I had a bar overhead, I would have to compensate by really, really pushing my head really forward and really, really pushing my bar behind me. So I don't want that. So now with the bar, one more time. Bar. Oh, here. I dip down. Oh. One more time. And this way. Alright, there's a jerk, and that's week three.